Um, there's just a few, a handful of minor little things about that project that need to be fi finished yet this year. Some landscaping issues and, and other minor discrepancies that were identified. Um, so just this week, the ground was broken literally, not, not the ceremonial groundbreaking, but the literal groundbreaking took place this week on the projects that will be this fall. And those are phase, excuse me? Yeah, I would call it phase three of this four-phase project that we're doing out there, which is the, the projects that are funded by that state grant that we got that was approved last November, or September, in the state uh, 2018 biennium budget. Um, that's the $4 million that the airport got. Um, <clears throat> the biggest component of that project is the, the expansion of the apron built basically building a larger parking lot for air, aircraft out there. And then the long runway, the main runway that's out there, that also is a, it's an old piece of asphalt. It was built in the late 80s. So it's nearing the end of its useful life. Um, that, that runway is going to be, rather than being reconstructed, which is a long and, and invasive process, they're just going to mill that, that the surface of that runway and overlay that, which is a a relatively quick process. It's still going to cause some some delays and some outages, but it'll still it, it will only be for a couple weeks, and then that runway will be ready to use again next year, uh, right away with a brand new surface. So a lot of new asphalt, a lot more plowing. If the commission so chooses to plow all that all that asphalt, I guess I could I could see justification for not needing to plow it all winter because honestly, uh, all the use of it is in the summer. So we'll we have some. Some things to consider for plowing for this for this upcoming plowing season. Um, the commission did. Well, it seems like when you really need money, it's never there, and when it starts raining, it pours. Because the commission was given an op opportunity to leverage some of its own money to save some of to save a large portion of that four million dollars, and it was a wise move on the commission's behalf, I believe, because. That $4 million from the state has far less restrictions on it than money that comes through other state channels or federal channels, especially federal channels. There's a lot of a lot of red tape for federal uh, federal funded projects. So by spending some of the commission's own money, there's a reserve fund or reserves that have been built up over the years, totaling roughly $300,000. The commission chose to spend about 160 of that as its 5% share of one of the projects that was originally going to be covered by out of the $4 million, about a $800,000 project. So what that means is the commission will pay 20% 20 of that $800,000, preserving, the, 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 preserving that $800,000 to be spent on something else. So like I said, a little bit of leveraging local money to preserve more uh, larger, larger government entity money and that is in the hopes of still preserving enough of that $4 million to build a hangar, which wouldn't be eligible for federal or other state, uh, state funding that comes through other avenues. So the most flexible money is being preserved for future endeavors. So there is still potential for more construction out there, yet next year, certainly no later than 2020, if, if the commission, if everything works out and the commission decides to move forward with it. With a the commission hangar. thinking about putting up any more hangars, larger size for some that's, of that's what the preservation. If I had a jet that big, I wouldn't want to park outside. Right. That's that's the uh, my my understanding is that's the hope of the preservation of that money that is more flexible because it could be spent on hangars rather than. So we're there's another avenue, another pot of state money that's going to build build a surface that was going to be spent or be, was going to be built out of that four million dollars. <laughs> It's honestly, it's just it's a, a little bit of accounting trickery, if you want to say who, where the money comes from and what it can be spent on. Ultimately, it was it's gonna it's gonna mean that the commission is gonna get more money for its you know, for its uh, continued development. Uh, and there's no deadline on how long you have to spend that for me. There hasn't been one as of yet. Nobody's told us that like. So I, I thought that at one point too, like if it had to be spent within the biennium, but it, that, it's my understanding as of now we haven't heard that from the local legislators and there, yeah, there's many other projects out there that extend beyond the, 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 uh, 
the end of their, their budget period. So, so that's where we're at with that project. And like I said, that one literally they started uh, scraping back the topsoil today. And it's amazing when those big machines get their blades in the ground, how quickly that stuff happens. It's a totally different, uh, totally different look over there already. So then when that project is going to be done this fall, at least the vast majority of it, they had a very aggressive timeline for that project, obviously starting as late as it did. They've only got about a month and a half to build it, you know, realistically, because mid to late October weather could, could slow that down. So I think they had a 45-day construction period for that. So it's, it's very aggressive. They're expecting to be working more or less sun up to sundown once. Once, once everything gets rolling out there, just to make sure that happens. A lot of asphalt, like I said, that big runway, 5,500 feet long, 100 feet wide, and then 40,000 square yards of asphalt on the apron. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, a one heck of a lot of, of asphalt going to be put in out there this fall. Um, papers will be busy. My understanding is they're gonna make sure there's two papers out here when it's time to do it, so. Once that's done, well, then we go into our winter dormancy season and let that, ass, that new asphalt kind of cure over the winter. Then next spring, the federal project kicks in, which is going to be a full-length parallel taxiway. I wish I would have brought a poster, but I can send a, I can send a small graphic of it for each of you to be, you know, distribute among yourselves. But uh, there will be a full-length parallel taxiway to the long runway. And that's today was a perfect example of how and why we needed it, because as it is now, they've got a stop, turn 180 degrees in what's called back taxi to midfield where they can get off toward the apron area up by the, up by the terminal building. And there was one plane on its way out and one plane on its, on its way in and they were both, you could hear them on the radio, okay, what do you want to do, what are we going to do, what should I do? And there was some indecisiveness. And they don't like that. Well, no, not when you've got you know, planes whose wingspans are 70 feet and they can't see the ends of their wings. You know, it's a, um, so, on busier days when there is the potential for insurances like that, then we shouldn't have to worry about that after next spring's project, which is the, uh, the FAA funded parallel taxiway to the full, full length runway. So, and that'll be lit too. So by the end of next year, I say it all the time, we're going to have, without a question, the newest airport in the whole state, possibly in the Great Lakes region, because we're going to have all of our operating surfaces are going to be brand new. All of our lighting is going to be brand new within, within, within a couple of years. So. Uh, I know when I was still the commissioner before Katie uh, replaced me, uh, a few of us a couple times we had bantered it back and forth whether years ago we had the, uh, the uh, a, uh, airline come in, you know, I don't know what, who it was, Midstate or whatever they called them way back then. Is there any, is that thought of anymore or is it something that we'll have to wait and see? That would be something obviously demand driven. Um, considering that the nearest uh, airport that services airlines is only about an hour away from us, it seems a little far-fetched. What's very reasonable or very likely to happen is some kind of a, and they're working on it in Sand Valley and me and, and one operator out of Chicago have been working on uh, almost like a scheduled charter, an eight or ten person aircraft that would fly a couple of routes a week between here and maybe Chicago or, or the Twin Cities, the, the places where we find the most activity coming from. And believe it or not, a ton of people flying from the Chicago area, Twin Cities area, flying 30 to 40 minutes to get here, which seems kind of absurd to me when you can drive it in three to four hours. But um, if you've got the plane, you may as well use it, as, I guess. So, uh, But something like that seems logical. However, it's still, I, I think it'd be a long-term plan, and it's you know, very much in its infancy as of now. So that's all the development. I'm probably leaving out a ton of things, and I was trying to be as brief as I could. Is there any questions or any ideas or thoughts? Or the worst case is, is there any uh, misconceptions that I can help to um, straighten out? Because I hear a lot of I still hear a lot, well, what are you going to expand? Are you going to be buying my house? I live right across the road. And I well, that's not exactly what we're doing, man. But uh, you know, for the, there's different interpretations of the word expansion. And uh, some people still believe that means we're buying out a bunch of property around the airport. So um, I, you know, I do as much as I can in public education and outreach. 
Yes, go ahead. Any neighborhood complaints about the jets, frequency of jets, the noise of jets? Last year, I think when it, when, when it first started happening, so it would have been late 16 and last year, there was quite a bit. This year, I haven't, haven't heard anything. So An acceptance, maybe? I don't believe it's really even that invasive in the neighborhoods around there. I've, when I knew some of the bigger ones were taking off, I would go to some various mm -hmm. areas, or somebody said they lived on 3rd and Oak Lawn, or whatever the heck they said they lived on. That jet came right over the top of my house, and when, so I go over there and sit nearby their house just to see how invasive it really was. And I hate to downplay the the importance of somebody's complaint, but sometimes I think to myself, well, if that's what they're complaining about. It seems kind of uh, kind of wishy-washy, if you want to say. Um, the FAA. Some people, some people have complained to the FAA last year, and the FAA's noise uh, abatement procedures are based on an average 24-hour exposure, not not merely a once every couple hours or one a day, you know, so the average exposure for these people is very, very low on the FAA's exposure uh, continuum. So, like I said, I hate to make it sound like it's not important, however, it's, uh, it might not be as Exaggerated as some some may, may, may used to make it sound. This year, I haven't heard a single complaint. So, just like, tell them it used to be a German prison camp. So, which, <laughs> do, they prefer, which do they prefer, the noise or the prison camp? Yeah, yeah POW camp. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, Good point, Jeremy. If uh, you would in in, in uh, uh, winding her up uh, about the municipal contribution, you yep. explain that. And then I was looking at this while you were talking a little bit. And, Wow, has this changed? The right. Fuel. Yeah, so those were a couple of the things that I thought of nothing else. The few things that you guys might like to take away from this and, uh, and tell other people is uh, just the fuel gallons numbers. Uh, that's what that is uh, uh, four years, three and a half years, this year and the three previous years. Um, if the numbers speak for themselves, I don't need to explain to you what you're looking at. That's pretty obvious that we're, that we're growing quite substantially. Um, What's 100? 100 Lola is a 100 octane fuel that's got, that still has, it's the, it's the one and only legal leaded fuel that's still out there because many of these aircraft that were built in the 40s, 50s, 60s, okay. 70s right. still need that lead to lubricate them. Um, so uh, that's one, that's av gas, aviation gas is, is mm -hmm. another another phrase for it. And jet fuel, of course, mm -hmm. you understand what that is. How would that burn in the 64 Camaro? It burns excellent in a lot of things, actually. <laughs> as long as you're not using it on the road. I would never do anything. No, no, I know. Right, Chief? I'm sure you would. So, yeah, the uh, fuel sales has to be expected. They're just continuing to grow, and I think it's reasonable to assume that that will continue to be the case. So, um, that gets back. I didn't bring a copy of my budget for everybody, but uh, I know it's been sent to a couple of you commissioners, and if you want more specific information. But as of right now, uh, fuel sale profit has been nearly $70,000 for the airport and then a couple other revenues that we never had before, catering which we never provided before and ramp fees which we never charged before. Ramp fees we've we've uh, got nearly 8000 in ramp fee revenue and nearly 2000 in catering revenue that was you know, revenues that we never had prior to this year. So again, all impacts of the, the jet traffic that's coming in. And that's about it I wanted to see from the budget. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was, yes, you see the municipal contribution breakdowns and the, you know, the minimal changes that were, uh, that it took place as a result of, of equalized value changes in the past year. So I guess the village of Port Edwards, 7894 is what I would hope that the, you guys would approve to continue your support for the airport commission. Well, that will be coming up. The workshops, the ribbon budget workshops will be starting very shortly, Madam Chair. Yes, it will. So, uh, okay. Commissioner Martinson, you have anything? I don't. The only thing I would say is when we were um, going back and forth, it did take a couple of interim meetings to figure out what to do with that money. Um, I would say Matt from the BOA, I mean, helped in big time, um, kind of helped guide us as a he really, um, they, as far as me really first going through this process, um, 
really have led us in a good direction and, and fought for us for other funding sources to be able to maybe keep some of that money back to be able to do some of the stuff that they wouldn't have been able to fund for us in the future. And that was kind of, we were kind of demanding at the last minute there. We were kind of like changing stuff up on him and he was, they were on it um, as far as MSA and both Matt um, were really, really helpful for especially somebody like me new that didn't really have any clue what to do with I had to talk with uh, Assemblyman Krug and Senator Keston and uh, I know firsthand, not from them, that they were pretty instrumental in bringing four million dollars to central Wisconsin. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we owe them a debt of gratitude for sure because of their Senator Keston. In fact, I guess at one, one meeting he was attending to solicit other people's votes for that Particular, uh, particular legislation. He made everybody and everybody that attended his caucus airplane-shaped cookies to remind them to vote for the airport. So, I thought you were going to say you took a ten-pound bag of potatoes from the farm, <laughs> or a free round of golf at San Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Any questions for anybody before we wrap her up? If not, Jeremy, Katie, I really appreciate it and. Uh, uh, you'll be due back in December, but that meeting is also the uh, budget hearing night, so we might have to postpone you until 2019 in January. Okay. So, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks. Okay, Chief, you can hear the Thank you for vacating. All righty, we are going to go to Chairman Saylor. Certainly. Um, we had a meeting on August 21st. Um, talked about a few things. Um, <clears throat> uh, we discussed some projects. Uh, everybody knows that the bunker is repaved. Uh, all that work is done. They're still working on some alley stuff right now. A lot of the patches are complete. And uh, the new road in the cemetery is complete as of right now. Um, the new truck route signs are up. Um, we talked about some maintenance of the disc golf, uh, the trash and recycling notification, which we'll discuss more at the next upcoming meeting. But we have a motion to approve the splash pad contract with, I make a motion to approve the splash had contract with them say. Easy for you to say. Motion by Chairman Saylor to <coughs> approve the splash pad contract with MSA. Do I have a second? <coughs> second by Trustee Mitchell. Discussion. Uh, anything you or Todd would like to add to that <coughs> this at this time? Uh, just that this contract essentially takes us from the defi uh, design phase uh, to bidding construction administration and uh, 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 obser observing construction, make sure those uh, plans that are developed uh, get implemented properly. Um, payment of this contract comes out of our grant uh, <coughs> foundation. Um, so this gets us on pace um, to have our splash pad open um, next summer. Okay, Don? No, I included a summary of, you know, what, what's going on with it in your update there. Okay. It's, pretty good, it's a pretty good summary. It's, thank you. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, can I, I don't know if I can, can I add an amendment to that motion? Uh, or is that not no, you can. To it? You can. Uh, Nick will correct me if I'm incorrect. Uh, you would have to list the uh, amendment to the motion. It'll have to have a second. We will discuss the mo uh, the amendment and uh, then vote on the amendment. And if it fails, then we are back to the original. If it okay. passes, then we yeah. go forward. Yeah. yeah, I would like to amend that motion to include that at no time in the future does that project exceed $500,000. Not zero, not a penny, over five hundred thousand dollars. I would second that. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Bingham. Uh, if Diane, would you read back what you have, please? 
motion to include at no time in the future does that project exceed five hundred thousand dollars. And a second by Trustee Grundon. Discussion on the amendment. This is a statement without a deadline. Or I'm not sure I understand. Are you saying by the time it's built next July, you're not right. including anything in a budget in future years? Correct. Well, well, I'd have to say that that 500000 is to build a splash pad. So, right. of course, that's going to be $500,000 for that. But as time goes, we might want to add other amenities. We might want to add a, well, we're going a to have bathroom to or do a maintenance budget. So, of course, that's not going to come out of the 500000 That's going to be 500000 is for the design and for the, the building of the splash pad. That within the confines of this contract, we do not exceed 500000 I assume the money is being held in an interest bearing account. Mm -hmm. So we're going to end up with actual cash left. Moreover, if we end up having what we really want and it comes in at $500,000 or $505,000, the village is not going, is going to be precluded from deciding that it wants to fork in another five grand if yes. need be? Yes. Well, not, I do not want any village money going into the implementation of this we, splash pad. We spend how much every year for a pool? Three hundred thousand about. Yeah. No. Jeff, do you remember? It was. It was that. The uh, maintenance, I believe, was between forty and fifty thousand a year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then I was way off. Well, my thing is, if, if uh, you know, when this project is done and it comes under, at, let's just say for sake of argument, five hundred and eight thousand dollars, but we've already accrued ten thousand dollars in interest. To me, that ten thousand dollars is part of the original five hundred. That's my looking at it. I understand. That. I mean, that's technically not village money, you know. That, True. That we got. Okay. Can I make a point of clarification? Sure. <clears throat> for, so for the, for the purposes of this agreement, I mean, MSA is not putting shovels in the ground. Uh, I mean, MSA is doing professional, ser professional consulting services, and while the estimated fee that they have listed here uh, is, is an estimate, um, I, I would suggest that if the concerns are about the project going over 500000 that the MSA contract is probably not going to be the, the point that puts it over because this is something that needs to be done in advance of any, any construction, any actual construction. I think at that point, um, a contract with the company doing the construction can be limited in such a way. But uh, I guess my... Uh, I want to make sure everybody understands that we're talking about the professional services here that just cover the design and the really overseeing the, uh, the engineering uh, from a professional standpoint of the, uh, of the project, not the, not the actual putting up of structures, digging of holes, and so forth. So at that time, what you're saying is I, I would introduce a motion that we not go over Four hundred and forty thousand, because we spent, or four hundred and thirty, because we spent. We're getting into it. We're going to spend sixty-six thousand dollars. We're in it. We're in it. You know. I guess what I'm saying at this point, going forward, I don't care where the costs are. I think we should be limited so that the village doesn't incur costs in excess of. And I will agree that interest outside of the interest bearing money, I would agree with that, uh, additional funds into this project. Going into the future, if it's built, yes, there's going to be maintenance, there's going to be budgeted amounts, and I understand that also. But I'm just saying initially, this 500000 Wisconsin Rapids hit 750 putting it up. Now, they went big time, they put up a shelter and they did a lot of stuff. But they spent seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on their splash pad, and I guess I don't want to get into that when, at a time when we don't have a lot of money, and we're looking for money to finish the project, and we've got it three quarters done, and there's pressure 
to spend another 100000 that we don't have. I want to stop that right here, right now, that we don't get into that conundrum. Well, I, I'm sorry, but I think I'm, I'm mature and adult enough to make decisions without having to create some uh, childish little mechanism to say we're not spending anything more than. I think we set budgets, we spend money, we handle stuff hopefully for the village. We can make that determination. We don't need to have an artificial mechanism to limit how we spend it. Well, with all due respect, Mr. Duncan, I don't think it's a childish mechanism. It's done quite frequently with projects. And if you do exceed, then you're expected to pay a penalty or, or something to occur. So I would disagree with your assessment. Um, I Just at this point, I'm concerned about the financial impact of this on the village of Port Edwards. Bottom line. Um, what are the, yeah, go ahead, Mr. President. I'm done. Uh, without objection, Todd, you wanted to say something that I think you should be recognized. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, both of the other two municipalities that, I, I'm, all the other three, you know, Wisconsin Rapids did have more stuff, but Roman, Nakusa, um, they both, added things on at their leisure in some cases to, um, I think both of theirs were a little bit above. But I think this, what needs to happen is this, need, this project needs to be shaped to fit that budget. In both of those other projects, we bid al alternates on there, like additive alternates, such as a shade structure, stuff like that, benches, seating, trash cans, drinking fountains, you see what the bids are, and you see where they come in, and then you guys do get to decide what to award, and that's where, where you guys ultimately get to decide where to award this thing. I think if this is our ultimate goal that, you know, not a penny more, we need to be very conservative on the front end, thinking about <coughs> bidding economy and contingency on the project, because what if we hit something down to the ground or something isn't exactly where it is? I haven't had really anything on any of the, the other projects where it's been, geez, this thing isn't exactly what we thought it was gonna be. So there's been very little um, change order or contingency stuff used up during construction. But I guess I would say that bids have fluctuated a little bit, you know, from, one was a lot cheaper than the other one, you know, just for for the general installation and construction, depending on who got it. Is, do most of those bids or contracts have an escalator provision? So in other words, no. So 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 what I'm saying is, is if somebody bids and they're going to put in the piping and they're using PVC, and now we have hurricanes along the east coast and all PVC prices go through the roof because of the demand. They're locked in at that They're time. locked in at the time of bid, right. Okay. And their bid's good for 60 days. But you guys have the, I mean, and, and if the if the project, let's say that, the, let's say we bid the project and it comes in at $425,000, you've already got 66 in with MSA, and there's gonna be another couple thousand dollars of geotechnical work. Um, let's just say that, you guys are nervous about that and you don't want to award it, we can make some tweaks and rebid it prior to. You don't have to award it. That's where we have to make the decision. Okay. I would also just like to clarify that uh, when I was clarifying the contract, I wasn't arguing against uh, anybody's point or in favor of anybody else's, just so that there's no confusion about that. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure what happens, and maybe this, I'm not sure what happens with any money that's left over in that account. I assume it could be used for maintenance in the future, but um, that's something I might check with Legacy too. All I know is if uh, I had to put my name on it, you know, and if we got ten thousand dollars in there, uh, <laughs> we'll probably, you know, figure out a way to do it. For, that's the tweaking, absolutely. And, and, that's, and those things can even be done with change orders at the end, like, well, let's add a little bit of concrete here, you know, or let's make this, beautify this, let's put some landscaping in there. Right. Um, if just on that point, I understand the contract with Legacy is pretty flexible uh, yeah. in turn, so, um, but it would be beneficial for MSA to familiarize themselves with that too before getting into the design and so forth. 
If Mike had sent me a copy of it. <clears throat> okay, everything's back on the table. Any trustees wishing to speak further? If not, we are, I would ask the court <coughs> to read the amendment one more time. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric, go ahead. So Todd, you guys have been involved in the Nakusa the Rome and yeah. Rabbits. Yeah. It's all the same, they're all, I mean, <laughs> None of them are the same. Well, but I mean, the, it's, it's the, you got a pot of money and then that's where you're going. It's yes. not like this is your first time, yes. you're yes. right off the boat, you're going right. to make up whatever. So we've talked about this in the past. That $500,000, I want to say, with CRS and all the other contractors and stuff, the, the splash pad itself was only like 300000 or something. Well, so. Uh, and it's all the other amenities that you want to add. On Rome, they're. They direct purchase, so they don't have to pay the tax, and, and they direct, and, and so that it's all there. So we decided what the thing was going to look like, and then they direct purchase the equipment. Theirs was like a hundred grand. Uh, Nakusa's was one hundred eighteen thousand for their equipment. And then we paid the contractor to install the splash pad and the concrete in those in those appurtenances, and that was almost identical on both of them. You know, right around another hundred grand. Um, so you're probably looking at at uh, two and a quarter, and that's just for that center splash pad area, and then you got then some you area go. around it and a connection sidewalk at a minimum. Utilities, a valve mantle, a meter mantle, those are things that are necessary, but I'm just talking about just the splash pad itself there. So there's some things that are going to be necessary, but we can obviously, you know, work to make the, um, The excess stuff, alternates. Yeah. Set. Okay. Uh, John had the motion to carry a second, and if the clerk could read it uh, one more time for my old mind, then we will vote. And to amend the motion to include at no time in the future does the project exceed five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, you heard the motion, the amended motion read again. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, and those opposed? Nay. Aye or nay. I, I was an aye. I was catching up. You're I was an aye. Aye what? An aye to, for yes. the amendment? Yes. So okay, we have three, clerk, three. Is that three to three? Mm -hmm. uh, and I vote in the negative. So we are back to the original motion to approve the splash pad contract with MSA. Um, May I ask yes, go ahead. Um, I just want a, a clarification on the procedure uh, from Mike regarding uh, the, I guess, amendments, the, um, the strikeouts and um, initials on the contract. Is there a is that has that been done? Is that going to be done? Is there? Joe has the original with him, with the, with the initials from MSA that was brought this evening. Oh, okay. I see. I saw them. On that. They're both the same. Okay, that's fair enough. That, that, I have nothing else to say about it unless anybody has any questions about that. So I just wanted to make sure I saw it. Thank you. <clears throat> Where was I? Back to the original motion. Oh, the original motion. Uh, the original motion again was by who? Second by Mitchell. To approve the splash pad contract with MSA. Why don't, why don't you just read it all for me, if you would, Madam Clerk. The motion made by Trustee Saylor, seconded by Trustee Mitchell, to approve the splash pad contract with MSA. You've heard the motion read. Is there any further discussion on this part of it? I just have one, yes. one specific question. We're voting on the MSA. And that's it. That's it. Yes. This contract. Yes. For sixty-six thousand six hundred ten dollars. Yes. Correct, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. That's what I'm reading. Well, I just want to clarify that. Good question. Okay. No. I, I didn't mean to go to another attorney. You know, I'm not. You spoke up before you asked. <laughs> I may be an attorney, but you're not asking me as an attorney. I can't beat the rate though, twenty-five dollars right now for your three hours. <laughs> you certainly could. Okay. Without further ado, uh, all those in favor of approving the MSA contract.
Splash pad contract with them to say will signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Aye. And motion. Motion carries. Um, I still got more stuff. Okay, so next thing is, is I make a motion to approve the general engineering service contract with MSA. Is that you again? Oh, yeah. I, I can do a little yeah, intro for it. So all are really second. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Hold on. Uh, I mean, a motion by Sailor, second by Duncan. Uh, are there any discussion amongst trustees? Without objection, we'll go off table. So what it really is, is it's a, it's a general terms and conditions contract. It allows us to, yeah. to do task orders back and forth. The task orders are performed at a maximum value of $75,000. Those are basically a sheet of paper that gets signed and they go with the general terms and conditions of that, of that general services agreement. The general services agreement says that I would be your liaison for the road to Port Edwards. Many municipalities that once we have these general services agreement like this, we might do a task order for an annual 2019 general services for, they might budget five or $10,000. And it's for just general stuff that comes up and once approved by the president, the board, the administrator, depending on what your, your different approval levels are, to say, hey, MSA, can you help us out with this? We add a line under there as a task, and then we can charge you for those little things. Other projects, like let's say there's a, there's a street project, do you want to do a grant application? Those things are set up as separate task orders under that. Uh, yes, Mr. Bingham. But we're also allowed to go to other engineering sort of right. Yes. right. So we're not committed just to everything. Okay, thank you. Mike, you have anything to add on this? Uh this permission on uh, uh, a couple little things. Um, this contract is uh, you know the, the term of the agreement through the end of the year. Um, uh, and then it renews, but if we want to get out of it, we just give we give 30 day, a 30 day notice and we can get out of the contract. So that that's important. Um, some of the things MSA has been working with us on, uh, one of the things is helping with, with our capital improvement program and estimating costs uh, for 2019 and beyond projects. And uh, they've been working with us on those estimates at no charge. Anybody else? Okay, uh, we will vote. All those in favor of approving the General Engineering Services contract with the MSA will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. And gentlemen's a nay. Okay, and that passes. Anything else, Eric? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chairman Duncan, Pitt Committee. Um, are there any uh, questions in regards to the minutes of the Pitt Committee? Hearing none, then I'm going to move to approve the resolution of the 2018-6 supporting the amendment of the uh, TID number two. Second. Motion by Chairman Duncan, uh, second by Trustee Grundon to approve the uh, TID project plan TID to tax let me start over. Resolution approving project plan amendment number one to tax incremental district number two. Discussion. This is uh, essentially amends the boundaries of the TID um, to ensure that we, we don't have uh, so we, property that is of value for the bill, all the units of government, the, the village, school district, technical college. Are, uh, can still be used for their uh, general tax levy. Um, there's been um, complicated site with the warehouse. So with this boundary amendment, that keeps the uh, warehouse outside of the district, which is a benefit to all the units of government. Other thing that's in main, in main thing is in here is the updating of the uh, pro eligible projects list that does not commit us to doing the projects. It just says these are these are eligible uh, provided we have the funds to do that. Part of the biggest aspect is, is taking the warehouse out and adding the Y. Yes. So anything around the Y, which would I assume would include the area where the splash pad may have ultimately end up. Correct? 
Uh, I don't believe it includes that, but we, know that but we have to also keep in mind that projects um, within half a mile of the uh, TID boundary are eligible for TIF funding. Okay. So downtown would be an eligible area for, for project funding. Is the splash pad area not being eligible because we own it? Well, if you get, it's in the, yeah. Yeah. And you, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It wouldn't be the splash pad itself, but what you could do is, is any roads, yes. parking in the area, yes. oh, that see. stuff could all be utilized as yes. part of that. Yes. It was within that half mile of, of the TID boundary. So. Hey, I have a discussion. Hearing no request to speak, all those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. And I believe that's all I have. Anything else? Nope. Okay. I have no further comment or anything else to present. So. Okay, thank you. Chairman Martinson, Public Safety. Public Safety met on August 21st. And um, any questions on the minutes from the meeting? Um, with that being said, I would like to make a motion to approve the upcoming training to include Officer Lamb Defense and Arrest Tactics trainer Training and Officer Lamb Child Maltreatment Summit and Officer Jezwitski Crisis Intervention Training. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Bingham to approve the motion on Police Department Training as written. Questions? Is that positive? Yes. Where is the training? Uh, the instructor training for Officer Lamb, I believe, is in Appleton. The child maltreatment subject summit is in Marshfield, and the crisis intervention training would be at Mid State Technical College. Okay. Is uh, Ms. Sis put that on yet? That yes. On yet? She does a good job. Okay, any other? I just want to add oh, one yeah. thing, if I might, if I may. I believe that um, when we had the discussion um, regarding the two-day training over in Appleton, you thought that there probably wouldn't be an overnight stay. Am I correct? I mean, that it is an option. It is an option for him because of the distance. However, yeah. just based on his preferences right. that he's shown in the past, yes. I, I don't believe that he would. Right. But it's up to him. It's up to him. Right. I said in the Twin Cities one time he did stay overnight then, but yeah, otherwise he likes to call. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Um, I guess that's all I have for public safety. Okie dokie. Chairman Martinson again, Finance and Human Resource Committee. Uh, Finance and Human Resource met on September 6th, and um, we had a lengthy meeting, um, discussion from the uh, fire department volunteers, and um, which will be carried forward with more discussion. Um, I did appoint. Um, I did appoint. Mr. Bingham as the representative for the village. Um, board, and then there will be two individuals that will be appointed um, by the fire department, and there will be conversation regarding uh, future wages, um, and that will then be brought back to the committee. And then that information will then be, if a decision is made, that will be brought to the board at a later date. Okay. Other than that, um, I would like to make a motion to approve payment of the bills. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson to approve payment of the bills. Second. Second. There we go. Oh, you're too quick for me. Okay, Martinson. It's not hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll talk later. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> motion by uh, Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Dunk to approve payment of the bills. Discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. It's the first time I've been speechless at a board meeting. Congratulations. 
Um, I'd also like to make a motion to approve the journal entries of the previous month. Second. Motion, motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Duncan to approve uh, the entry journal entries, approval of the journal entries of the previous month. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the fire truck financing in the amount of $468,233. That financing will be with Nakusa Port Edward State Bank. The 10 year financing at a rate of 3.5%. So motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Grundon to uh, approve the fire truck financing as written. Discussion? I just want to add I'm very pleased that it's a locally owned bank that we were able to do business with. Thank um, you. I would like to thank um, Administrator Cronerman for his work in uh, reaching out to various other lending institutions and coming up with uh, this resolution for us. I think that it was a, you, you put some time into it and I appreciate that. Well, That's all that I have. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the uh, purchase of the fire truck as written signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. I'm going to abstain from that. I'm just going to okay. abstain just because part of the problem. I want to abstain. <clears throat> And last motion is to approve resolu resolution 2018-7, setting the minimum unassigned general fund balance at 20%. Second. second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Duncan to approve the village board uh, resolution setting the minimum unassigned general fund balance as written on the resolution. Is there any discussion? So I have a way of, uh, the, it's already what we're doing. Yes. This, the this, policy says 5%. We've been doing 20. We're just changing the policy. That's it. Right. right. Just Nothing so. different. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. And, and this is a recommendation, just a policy recommendation from our, from our auditor. And so when it comes to what we're doing, we're, we're doing great in that area. We have been set very low, but we have never been down there either. Correct. So. All right, any other discussion? Hearing no request, all those in favor of the resolution will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Okay, Chairman Martinson, anything else? No, nope, that's it, thank you. Okay, let me sign my name here quick. Don't forget to do that. Someone at this board distracts me from me. <clears throat> Uh, unfinished business for previous meetings. I have nothing. Uh, nothing was listed as new business. Anything crop up in the meantime? I have nothing. What I have is uh, just some information. I'm trying to do that under your administrator. Oh, okay. I thought you were moving on to that item. All right. Report from the village administrator. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, what was it? Uh, last week or the last week, August, uh, the new carts for the waste and recycling were delivered. This brochure was included with the carts, and this outlines the process. Um, on the back, there is a schedule here. The uh, the entire village uh, is now being picked up on Wednesdays. The uh, second Wednesday of the month is bulk waste collection. The residents will need to call Kim at the village and, and uh, give, uh, let her know um, the address of where the bulk uh, pickup is. And that's going to need to be into Kim by 4 p.m. the Friday before that second, second Tuesday. So get your request into Kim uh, before the weekend. Um, so can you explain what the bulk items are? Bulk is... Basically, Mattresses, furniture, other items too large. It's not construction items, uh, tires, appliances, electronics. Um, so uh, if, if there is any questions, uh, people can uh, give me a call. 
Mike, you mentioned Tuesday. How did you mention that in the context of Tuesday? Did I say Tuesday? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. I, I, it's Wednesday. It's the, it's the second Wednesday of the month for bulk collection. Second Wednesday. And you have to notify village by? Um, the Friday before. The Friday before. I misspoke on that. Um, but the schedule, the big thing is the schedule's on the back of the brochure here. We have extra copies at the municipal building. Um, if people want a copy, they can pick one up. Has everybody gotten one that did not get the correct one? That we know of. There may be some unique situations out there that we just found out about, but uh, we did uh, get those. Um, there are some unique situations out there, and we were notified and promptly responded. Because um, I don't think I ever got one. Attached oh, no, I have, no, it's not, no. Oh, no, mine was, yes. Oh, the brochure. The correct one. Um, First we, the tough part, you know, we had some of the brochures, um, the incorrect brochures delivered to parts of the village. We tried to assess uh, what aspects those were, um, what parts of the village that was. It was and so on for advance, uh, disposal went around and hand delivered the appropriate brochure to those areas. No, we did not. I'm not sure that we did. That's why we have these available at the municipal. Anything else? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So the part about construction materials not allowed to be picked up. In the past, if you did your own project at home, you put it out and it was picked up. That's no longer going to be that? They were not. If they picked it up, they were not supposed to pick it up. But I thought it was clarified that if it's not a contractor, if you're doing it yourself, it goes out as trash. Does anybody? My understanding is construction materials are construction materials. That's where you, you get a firm that will cart it away for you and you pay the tipping fee. That's my understanding. Right, or it's up to you to take it up to the landfill directly. Correct. So that that's a change that I think kind of I didn't we didn't have any discussion about it because it was, and I called, and because we have had over the years different projects, and as long as it's, if you have a contractor, they take it. If it's yours, they'll pick it up. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to put my out. I'm driving all my I'm going to put it out. And if it's there Thursday morning or whatever, though. And he's the chairman of the search committee. <laughs> I can just envision all kinds of potential issues as to what is and is not construction material. And so I think this is going to be That's a good question. Nebulous. I think more often than not, they're going to probably take it. I mean, for instance, is our paint cans construction material? No, they're hazardous. If they're empty? They're hazardous. If they're in a black bag in your garbage can, do they get taken? <laughs> well, I think it's my job as the presider to get us back on course here. Very good. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, Diane, report from clerk treasurer. No, nothing. Nothing? Okay, trustee comments. Um, do you, would you have something for the CERT meeting next Tuesday on tiers? Situation. It's on the agenda, or the proposed agenda right now. Right. It's, on, it's on the proposed okay. agenda. Okay, great, situation. great. Did you say Tara's situation? Yeah, yeah. I have a situation. You have a construction situation. <laughs> now I'm being picked on for more <laughs> things. Okay. Well, I am closing <laughs> trustee comments. Why? Because I can. All righty. <laughs> village board meetings from uh, September 12th to October 9th, beginning on Tuesday, September 18th at 5 p.m. CERC will meet in the municipal building. And there is rather an interesting uh, agenda that night, so it will be on the website, posted at the three spots around. You might want to come down for that. Uh, Thursday, we go to September 27th. At 4.30 p.m. we have the Plan Commission, and Mr. Vice President, I believe we have three items that will be looked at at the Plan Commission, Mike. Um, 
couple, couple about that. One of them is up in the air running out. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, then also on Thursday. Can I them in advance of the meeting so that I know what I'm looking at? Yes. yes. Thursday the 27th at 5 o'clock, the PIP meeting will, the PIP committee will meet then, also in the municipal building. And then on Thursday, September 27th at 6 p.m., the Public Safety Committee will meet. And thank you for Chairman Martinson for moving your regular scheduled meeting back for us. Absolutely. Uh, then on Thursday, October 4th, the 5 p.m. municipal building will be the Finance and Human Resource Committee. And then Tuesday, October 9th, 7 p.m., right here at Edwards Alexander Park, the October Village Board meeting will take place. Um, yes? Did we want to mention anything about the those dates? Uh, that would be a good idea, I guess, for the other trustees that are on yeah. FHR. Yeah. Trustee Barberson, you have the floor for those. Um, regarding our uh, budget meetings that we have set, um, they are set for October 3rd at 5 p.m. and October 4th, um, and that will be right after the regular monthly meeting. Um, so, which is at five o'clock, so hopefully we'll be over and done with that and we can get on with the budget meeting. So the third and the fourth will be the budget meetings. And then uh, on October 9th at that meeting, the board as a whole uh, will preview it and uh, anything that the board kicks back to FHR, then they will go back and correct it and bring it back. And Mike, are we back to December for the public hearing on the budget? Or I think so. All right. I think so with some decisions. As you mentioned, the second Tuesday in November. Yes, we're pushed back per our discussion at the FHR meeting, do the staffing issues and scheduling overall to get everyone to meet. That's better to, to go to that. Okay, very good. So Diane's got those down, thank you. Uh, anything else from anybody? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Sorry. Trustee Duncan, second by Trustee Saylor. We stand adjourned.